Now once you understand how you can create this form inside this application, let's take a look at how you can get the data from this form when you click on this add button. So what we need to do is we need to get the data of these input text boxes in the form of object. So we can pass that object to the backend and store that data as a new record in the database. So I'm going to back to the project and here inside this form, I'm going to grab the data of these input text boxes and return as an object. There are different ways you can get the data from the form using react state or using use reducer or using some external libraries here in this project i'm using use reducer hook use reducer hook allows you to get the data from the form very easily so what we have to do is we need to first import here a statement so we need to say here import and we need to import here use reducer from the react library then inside this form right here we need to say constant in the array this use reducer is going to return two variables so we're going to structure that variables inside this array so here i'm going to say use reducer and this reducer hook is going to take two arguments first is the reducer function and second is the initial state the hook then return an array of two items the current state and the dispatch function so i'm going to pass here a function like this and as a second argument, you need to specify the initial value of this reducer. I'm going to specify initial value an object. Now, instead of creating a function inside this reducer, let's create a function at the top, right up here. Here, I'm going to create a function. So I'm going to say here constant form reducer is equal to, and this function is going to take two arguments. First is a state and second is event. Inside this state variable, you get the previous state and inside this event, you have the current dispatch function value don't forget to specify here an arrow like this and then i'm going to pass this reducer function right here something like this just for that this function is going to return an array of two items we are going to destructure that values in, inside this array so here i'm going to say form data and set form data now this is the state and this set form data is the dispatch function using this function we can set a new state to this reducer and using this form data we can get the current state just for that inside this form reducer i'm going to return an object and inside this object what i want to do is when i call this set form data i want to update the previous state whenever the new state comes in i want to update my previous state so to do that i'm going to say here spread operator and call a state and then pass here a comma and then here i'm going to pass an object with a new state value so i'm going to say here name then specify event dot target dot value so now when you call this set form data function to this input text box it's going to return the value to this event dot target dot value so the name value became the value of the input text box so this property is going to get the value of this input text box. But what I want to do is instead of just specifying this hard coded name property here, you can see we have different values here. First name, this is the last name. Then we have the email, salary and so on. So instead of this name inside this array, we pass event dot target dot name. So using this statement, we can get different properties with different values. Now, just for that, to this input text box, here, we pass on change event. So, whenever we change anything, I'm going to pass and call a function set form data. So, I'm going to call this dispatch function whenever I change anything inside this input text box. And I'm going to do the same for all my input text boxes. So, I'm going to copy this and paste this statement to all my input text boxes. And don't forget to do the same for these radio buttons something like this now let me explain this statement let's suppose that you type something inside this first name input text box that is going to call this set form data function and this set form data function is going to create a property called first name right here and then it's going to get the value of this input text box and pass that value to this property using this statement and using this state and this spread operator, we are going to override the previous value. Now, just for that, inside this form, I'm going to call a function to get the submitted data. 
So at the top here, I'm going to say constant handle submit is equal to, I'm going to call here a function like this. And to this form, we call here on submit event. And to this on submit, I'm going to pass this function handle submit. And just out of that, right inside this handle submit, I'm going to say console.log form data. Save these changes back to the project and open the console, reload the browser. And now when I type something here, let's suppose if I type daily tuition and I'm going to pass the email and here is the salary. When I click on this add button, you can see I'm going to get my data here and the form quickly reload. This is because this is the default behavior of the form. So we need to solve this problem by adding here the event parameter and call here event dot prevent default. So by adding this function, you can prevent the default behavior of the form. And now when I click on this add button, you can see right now you're not going to get anything because this is the initial state of this form. Let me reload the browser and add something here. Daily tuition, email and salary. When I click on the add button, you can see you're going to get the data as a response. You can see you are only going to have four properties here because you only change four input text boxes. Let's suppose if I change this date and this active user, when I click on the add button, now inside this object, I can get the status and the date as well. Now, just for that, let me add an icon here to this add button. So scroll down to this button right here. I'm going to add an icon. So let me first add here, add. And in the spawn tag, I'm going to add an icon. So let me first import the icon at the top. Here, I'm going to say import bi plus from react icons bi. And I'm going to use this box plus icon inside this spawn tag. Don't forget to change the style. So I'm going to say size 24 pixel. And to the spawn tag, I'm going to specify class padding x1. This will add space between this text and this icon. So this is how you can simply get the data from the form.